Hi, welcome back to Cos Car Seat. Today I want to show you how I converted my Radio Master TX16S into a Max version, if you like. So this is the face plate and the gold accents that I got from Unman Tech. You can buy this as a complete kit. Comes in around 70 quid and then obviously you have to fit it yourself. So what you're about to see now is clips that I put together when I was making it. It's not a complete full length video of me making it, it's just some bits and bats that I put together so you can see roughly what you've got to do. After you've watched that I'll come back and I'll give you my opinion on whether or not it was worth doing it or not. Right, so hopefully from the beginning of the video you've seen that this is now complete. So this is what we started with. This is obviously the TX16S and then there are gold parts and this is our, it's supposed to be gold but it's more silver than gold to me and this is the front fascia, the three parts you get with the panel. These are the screws because you need different screws to tap it in to the front panel and then you get a set of screws for the attachments here. As you can see, these are all the different parts we're going to use. So, I'm not going to do a full video of me building this because it's going to be the most boring video in the world or it's going to have to be on fast forward. So what I'm going to do is do partial strip downs that I'll show you various things and I'll put all the clips together at the end and then we should have some kind of video of the semi process and any problems I've had because I'd imagine this is going to be quite complex. So, let's cut away. Okay, so we've got the back off. So as you can see, the back's off. There's four screws hold the back on. I'll just show you on here, so you've got um, two top mounting screws there, two bottom screws here and here and then it will release the side when you take off these um, rubber bits that go here and that will release the sides so it simple comes off. Oh, two screws hold this top piece on and what are we left with then? There's two wires inside for your back port, one goes into this cable here and one plugs into here. If you are thinking of doing this, I suggest you take as many pictures as you can. It's not going to hurt taking pictures, I've just taken one now when I'm making this because all this lot's coming out and if you want to be 100% certain where it's going to go back in just take as many pictures as you can of the unit. That's exactly what I'm doing now, I'm taking pictures at the same time as I'm videoing this. And you stand less chance of messing up. So I'll give you I'll be back when I take the next oh, stage. Quick, quick quick cut back in here. So as you can see I've taken out the roller and I've taken out the switches here and I've also undone this board. The motherboard connects on here with a ribbon connector. The only one in there, I'll just show you underneath there because it's still there, that white one. It's got a blue end on and it plugs into there. The reason I'm taking this out is under here you have another ribbon connector which is going to the screen. I'm not sure how that would come out yet so I'm going to take out up above it first and let me see if I can lift that bit out together. But as you can see it's took me about five minutes to get to this stage but now I'm at a stage. Or oh, the other other thing on the motor You'll have to take this little motor out which goes on the board and that is for your vibration feedback. That's a little vibration motor if you ever wondered what one looks like. And that simply spins around and makes that vibration. So I'll show you this bit. So what I'm going to do is take out the switches. So I've undone the two, the tops, but to get the switches out I have to remove the gimbals, which are four screws. One there, one there, and there's two at the top there. One there and one under there. The other one is underneath this potentiometer, which is your little slide switch at the side. So to do them, you must take these out first. It's the same on a jumper, and this, this just pops off, and then you've got two screws under there. Uh -huh. So as you can see, we've got the gimbals out. So the gimbals just pulled out, and then behind the gimbals, you have these aluminium plates, which I'm gonna keep, because they're very nice piece of kit. These not plastic, these are aluminium. I've got obviously different ones to put in. But once you do that, all your switches are then gonna fall out. You can just push them back through the holes, and you're left with what you've got here. There's two plates you need to take off now, that one there, the top plate, and then underneath that you've got another one which has got three screws, one here, one at the other side and one at the bottom. They come out and that should relieve this switch pack up. It will then leave me this bar in here, which I'll take out, and that should allow me to set the screen out. And then we are virtually there. One thing to note when you're taking your switches out, your switches are held on with these little black metal pieces with two little grooves in. The little grooves allow you to put a screwdriver in and flick them out of some long no needle nose pliers or if you're lucky enough to have one or one of these, you get these when you buy a replacement pack of these for your transmitter. I've got quite a few of these now and then these just are used to flick them out. So, so far I'm about 12 minutes in. 
So I'll cut back in. Okay, that probably looks a little bit scary, but that is the entire center. So that goes in there, and as you can see, leave it all in one piece as much as you can. You need to pull these out. And there's one here also, if you can see. You must take that one out and put that in the new one. And so all I'm left with now is my screen and my board, which and I think there is, if you can see, a screw there for the screen. And I think there is one round the other side there. And the screen should come out, but I shall cut back in. I'm not trying to do that on film because I'm not sure how it's done. So there you go, we're stripped. So like I thought, there was them two screws that I showed you on the bottom holding the screen in. One there, one there, and there was also one there. So the first part I'm actually going to put back in when I start rebuilding this is the screen. And I'll get that in place so that's done out of the way and I'm not going to damage them cables. If you are swapping, if you are swapping this then i've got to put all this together because this piece is separate and you can see it's screwed in so i'm going to go start preparing it to get ready for built and then i'll cut back in when i've got this this built and it's ready to start putting items back in the important bit <laughs> which i didn't say is all these this side needs to come off and it's held in with screws all the way along as you can see there's lots of screws and they hold this side piece in because this isn't being replaced the back and the side stay the same so we need to get them screws out. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So as you can see, we've got the frame on the side. I have put the screen back in and put the three securing screws. There is one there. And then if it moves to this side, one there and one there. And then I've put the four screws back in to this unit here for the control panel. So that's what we've got back in. Now this is, what, this is the bit that's proved to be the most awkward to me. These buttons here have to go in before you put this bottom panel in because if you don't get them in you have to strip it off again and i've done it twice so far it's pretty annoying the other thing that's proved a little bit difficult getting this to line up there proved a bit awkward but as you can see it's all nice now and that's where we are so i'm going to put the center bit back in uh hopefully get all my switches in and then i shall cut back in and we'll go from there so as you can see, we've now progressed quite a bit. So all I've simply done is this screws back in. There's two screws here and two screws behind which hold the centre knobs in. I've then just put the switches back on and screwed them back in with the new kit. And as you can see, I've also replaced these dials. These dials do not come off facing forward. You can only take them off when you've took... So they can't pull off because they're the uh, point behind I show you. So this goes behind the plastic so you can't pull them that way so you have to take the whole thing out backwards so as you can see it's quite a way on so i'm going to get the i'm going to get the gimbals fitted back in now and i'll get my switch away back back down the bottom here and then we'll have a look okay so i'm actually gonna put the last bits on here and then i will show you when i connect the battery and do my first turn on because there isn't much to do that just a couple of bits to put on these switches to put back in here um the little motor that goes in there and connect up the cables for the um gimbals the one thing i did want to show you is this this is the bit that does all the work so this is the four in one module so that's what it is like when you take it off it connects up to your main board there via this cable here and then there are your pins that go on so you can connect this like i do to crossfire as you see it's quite a simple unit all the guts of it are underneath a little plate and that goes in to them four screw holes here so let's put this back together i'm going to get the back back on it and then we shall do a turn on together. Let's see if it does actually work. There you go. It's all done. So the only problem I had was uh, the screws on the... I hadn't tightened the screws up fully on the cover that goes behind here. So it wasn't making... But you can hear it now making contact. And there you go. So, done. So let's go back to the main part of the video now. And we'll discuss whether it's actually worth the money and the time and effort it takes to put this thing together. So you see from the video that it's quite a big job to do. Um, the only difference between the end result of that is I've got this on here, which is the Eosheen watch. Uh, there's quite a few different versions of this, and I have printed the back it off Thingiverse, 
and it just clips on so you can just clip it on and off and that's the only difference between that and the end was it worth doing uh, no <laughs> took a long time uh, and it's not the best fit and finish so you have to mess around with these switches to get them to work properly and even now some are better than others if you listen to that one and listen to this one it's not as good so there's a lot of things like that the on and off switch took some doing because it kept not working and working all in all it looks fantastic when you've done it and i really do like the look of this um but for me probably wasn't worth it now the only thing i didn't do is i didn't put these covers on the side you can buy the leather covers i don't particularly like them because also they stick out a little bit as well and to me it kind of wasn't what i wanted so as you can see you can make it look really nice i like the folding handle on the back kind of the overall look is phenomenal for me it's the kind of thing i like you can buy this in a carbon fiber and red you can also buy this in purple um, with a, and you can get these in blue, purple, red, I think you can get them in black and then obviously you can buy the different colour fronts to do this in silver, gold and carbon fibre. Uh, this is the gold front which isn't that much different than the silver to be honest, it's just a shade, couple of shades different. But all, all, all in all, I like the look of it but I don't think it was worth doing. Still a fantastic transmitter, so thanks so much for watching, have a fantastic day.